right, I'm Benjamin Halleck from uh, West Grove, Pennsylvania, and I guess you could classify me as a maker. Um, I just like robotics, computers, anything that re- anything that involves electricity, I guess. But um, I recently recently created a uh, telepresence robot, and um, telepresence robots it, it's a technology that um, it is a commercially available, but it's basically it's just really really expensive right now. Um, not that exactly needs to be expensive, but it's just what companies, I guess, are doing. And um, I created a telepresence robot on a budget of five hundred dollars. It's my claim to fame. So five hundred dollars. Yes. Okay, and it's it's named Maya, right? Yes, uh, it's it's an acronym for Me and You Anywhere. Me and You Anywhere. Good. So uh, you brought Maya to to Maker Fair in New York. What yes, was, I did. And how was that experience? Uh, it was great. Um, I what I. That it was my second year at the Maker Fair. I um, ex- I visited the year before, so um, it was a lot different um, exhibiting than visiting. And uh, I really liked um, I really liked going around the year before. So I mean, that's one thing that um, I would have liked to go get you know see more of the fair. But it was it was great um, having a turn in um, the other person's shoes. Shoes, I guess. Yeah. So you set up Maya at, at a booth, and uh, you just created a video which I watched. Uh, of of uh, you operating Maya remotely, and again for someone who doesn't necessarily know, what is a telepresence robot? What is telepresence? Um, like I guess a lot of people refer to it as um tel- as a video chat on wheels, and it's kind of um it's not exactly fair to call it that, but it kind of helps you understand it. It's basically what we're doing now. Like um I can see you, you can see me, we can talk to each other. Except right now, if I were for example to take a tour of your house, you would need to pick up your computer or laptop, whatever, and uh, move it around. If I had my robot there, I could just say I could just drive it around your house. I could pick up things and et cetera. So it's basically um I can it's just like I'm there uh, really. So you're able to control and move it around and interact with people, right? Right, all over the internet. Right, and you can, in in the case of Maker Fair, you were on site, but you could have operated it um, without being right. on site. Yeah, I was um, I was not at the booth uh, for a couple of different times. I mean, I was at the booth for a lot of time because I had my computer there. But um, uh, for a couple of times, I went off uh, um, a good distance away, and I was on a different Wi-Fi network just to kind of demonstrate mm-hmm. demonstrate it. But yeah, I was on site. What are the key components of Maya? What are the technologies that you um, built? Essentially, like the main, I guess the uh, the drive train, I guess you could call it, or the base is a um, Roomba robotic vacuum cleaner. Uh, which you can obtain for, on eBay for about fifty dollars. Um, a used one of the, some of the used ones anyway, which do work with the computers. Um, a um, serial to US or well, it's serial to USB technically, but um, it um, it allows you to control the Roomba. You can uh, make your own or SparkFun sells them now. Um, and a laptop, any netbook really, it can run. Um, it can run when it has to run Windows, but it can run um, XP to seven to Windows seven. Um, there's the um, monitor, which is um, it, so you can see them. Uh, it the web the webcam. It's a um, HD webcam that I got from a site called um, Cowboom, which is basically um, Best Buy returns. And so it's a hundred dollar webcam that I got for thirty dollars, um, just because the packaging packaging was damaged. And um, and then the other main components are. Um, the pan and tilt uh, for moving the camera, which I built the brackets and stuff myself. It's pretty easy. And then um, the arm, of course, and the body. And mm-hmm. Now, the housing is look like some ordinary household components there. Yeah, yeah. It's a um, the housing is actually a Big Lots trash can. And um, the first model was something that we just found in a found in one of our sheds. But um, but the problem was it was kind of cracked up, and it um, and when we tried to attach the arm to it, it just like shattered because it was. It, we've had it for just about five years, so it's gone, and it's been outside, so it's gone through cold and heat, you know, which just cracked up the plastic. But we were lucky enough to find the same exact trash can at Big Lots five years later. <laughs> That's good. So tell me, how, how did you get the idea for this? I mean, how did you decide this is what you wanted to do, and what was well, your first step? Yeah, essentially, um, I think it kind of was multiple things. One, um, I bought a um, the Rovio. Um, it's like a little, it's basically like a little... Uh, Wi-Fi controlled car with a camera on it, and um, it was great, but the uh, video quality wasn't very good. Audio didn't work with Max, and there was just like a lot of glitches. Like it was really, really slow, and uh, it was hard to configure over the network, like opening the ports and stuff. So um, I just, I just, it was three hundred dollars. So I returned it and just started putting my money into something. Um, basically, what I kind of realized that um, 
I wanted something I could visit my grandmom with just um, because I don't get to see her enough because both my parents are working and um, I can't drive. I'm not that old. And, but um, so, so I just wanted something I'd be able to visit, kind of be independent and visit my grandmom's friends and visit anybody really without having, first of all, to waste gas money and having my mom have to drive me around and when my mom's busy. So uh, I basically just started brainstorming and the uh, first version, I guess you could call it, it was just the uh, Roomba with the laptop on it, which was basically the equivalent of a um, of the Rovio, except um, because I was using Skype, it did work, and it was like high def, and it, so it was a lot, lot better than the Rovio, and um, the netbook was 180, and the Roomba was 50, so it was still less than the Rovio, so, but then I just kind of started adding on, because my grandma complained that, you know, she was talking to the floor, so um, I just kind of started building up and adding different features. I just kind of took surveys from the people who... But, um, right. Sorry. But, but in that first version, was your grandmother able to, to, to communicate with you? Yeah, yeah, she was. And it, everybody was. I tested it on, you know, on my family. It, it, it was just something kind of that I did in a uh, uh, night. So it wasn't anything that like, I actually tested uh, formally. But um, yeah, it, it was. You couldn't interact with it, and it was pretty good. It's just that... Um, it wasn't you. You were talking to a floor, and you couldn't. The stereos weren't very loud, or the stereo wasn't very loud. So, okay, that's good. So let's backtrack a bit. Before you built Maya, um, you had a, you have a particular life story, a series of events that that happened to you. Uh, actually, yeah. before you came to the first Maker Fair, will you tell me a bit about that? Yeah. What happened was, um, I'm not really sure how I got it, but I got it's um, called C diff. It's sort of like E. coli. It's in the same type of strain, and it's um, it's basically it's a bacteria, I think. But I'm, I should know more about what made me sick. But I don't. Um, but so it's basically it's something I got really really sick from, and um, it, you can get it from food. You can get it from um, you can get it from like bad hygiene, not bad hygiene, right. but like bad, you know, like restrooms stuff like that, and just. A lot of different things. It's usually in nursing homes, so I was the first. Um, I was one of the first, or one of the only kids to get it in the um, hospital out of like the history. But what happened was, after I got over that, the um, bacteria releases um, toxins, which um, really, really takes a um, in, like takes a toll on your kidneys, and that's what happened. I went into um, um, I went into kidney kidney failure basically, and um, it was it was a pretty hard time. I didn't. Really? Yeah, it, it was about three weeks that I went without eating, and. Um, only reason I started eating is because they said that they were going to have to put a needle on my neck. And, you know, I don't like needles in my neck. So um, so you were I, in the I, hospital this whole time. Yeah, I, I was in the hospital for just about a month, I think. Um, and I basically, um, I made a joke. You know you're sick when you can't even, when you don't even feel like going on Facebook. Because it's something we don't do so much. And I, I was just sleeping most of the time. And I couldn't, I, like water made me nauseous. So it, it was it was really tough. And basically, um, I, I pretty much figured that I could by my mom at that point because <laughs> no but um she my mom asked me um what I wanted to do if I if I did get out because at that point the doctors were basically telling my mom that um I was the first reported kid in the country to get um to get C diff and then go into kidney failure um so they weren't they didn't know what to do at all so um so basically what they they just told my mom yeah. that they hoped for the best but um they didn't know what would happen so my mom asked me what i wanted to do if i could get out and i mentioned the um maker fair i didn't know that they were going to have it in new york this year um i just heard about the california so um when my mom found out that it was in new york it was a lot easier for her than um to purchase plane tickets because we're about three hours away so she purchased the tickets in the hospital thinking that i probably wouldn't be able to make it and um, i did i was lucky enough to make it it was amazing that's fantastic so you guys got on on a on a train or a plane and and came to New York, and, yeah, and it this was, is um, two years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was um, yes, two years, yeah. And she put you in a wheelchair, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I was. I was in a wheelchair for a lot of it because um, I was still anemic at that point. Uh, because the um, it take it takes a toll on your uh your blood cells and blood counts and stuff. So I couldn't I couldn't walk much, and I I was I think I walked parts of it, but I was in a wheelchair for the majority. Of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I rec- so, uh, how did you feel being at Maker Fair? Well, it was just interesting to see. Um, like I guess when your computers are something that like there are. I mean, now I'm in high school. I know like kids who are probably even better than me. But being in um, seventh, 
eighth grade. Yeah, going into eighth. It, it was hard because I didn't know anybody who was into computers, and it was so great going there and not just seeing like seeing people who were thousands of times better than me and seeing like what I could do. But then also getting hands on with stuff like the um, 3D printer that I've only seen in like pictures and stuff, and just like you know, it was just amazing seeing all those different devices that you would have to order online if you wanted to see it. Yeah. Uh huh. And did you? I heard you learned to solder. Yeah, I did. Um, the Spark Fund had it. Well, um, I guess my first exact first ex experience was um in the um Maker Shed booth. They had um like solder your own pins, which um like the light up pins, which I still have. And um, but then they had a um Spark Fund had a booth where you could assemble your own uh, Simon Says game, which I think that that would have to have like more credit, I guess, because the pin was pretty simple and uh, I didn't get it too much. But um, they, the people at Sparkfun were really, really helpful and stuff, and with teaching me like d different tips, like you know, tinning it and stuff like that. So yeah, I learned there. Very good. And so you went home after Maker Fair, and uh, this year you came back as a maker. With mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was. I. But I mean, I probably wouldn't be where. I am now. I mean, obviously, I mean, I learned how to solder there and um, I've gotten pretty good at it just because every, you know, making a robot involves a little bit of soldering. But so, I mean, I wouldn't have even probably made a robot if I hadn't been to Maker Faire because um, I've tried to study videos and stuff, but um, it really wasn't kind of clicking. And I w didn't really want to learn how to use something that was 750 degrees through a video, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you went to Maker Faire, you got a lot of feedback from people, and talked to people about it, and then a couple of weeks later you went to Science Fair. Yeah, um, I basically just, I, it, I've kind of always had it, had that idea of, you know, making a robot like that, so that's why I jumped on the Rovio, and it was just something that, at that point, was just kind of a dream, because I didn't have the skills to make it, um, and that's the skills at the Maker Faire. That's great. And, but how'd you do in the Science Fair when you, when you got there? Um, well, I got, um... I got best in show, uh, first place for uh, Chester for the ch I'm in Chester County, Pennsylvania. So for the county for the county fair, I got um, best best in show, first place for the um, Delaware Valley Science Fair, which is um, is the tri-state area. And then um, uh, I got nominated to be in the Broadcom um, Broadcom Masters Science Fair, which is it's a um, I was in eighth grade last year, so it was a um, it's a national science fair for middle schoolers. And so I just got back from Washington, D.C., and I placed second place. Second place. Fantastic. Uh, yes. How was the experience of being at the science fair? It was good. It was a lot like um, the Maker Fair, except there were more kids. And so it was cool seeing that, um, well, we had some, a lot of the stuff was team stuff. So it was interesting getting adjusted because, like, everybody there is kind of the smart kid who, I mean, the problem with group work in most schools is that, like, one kid or sometimes two kids do all the work. So when you have a team of like six kids who are used to doing all the work, you know, it's kind of like they didn't have teamwork at all, you know? So um, it was interesting because a lot of kids were having trouble getting adjusted to that. So, but it was really cool meeting tons of really, really smart kids. Again, people who are smarter than me um, and just, you know, interacting with them, talking to them, making friendships, you know? Oh, that's great. So are you continuing to work on Maya? Yeah, I am. I'm still kind of upgrading, upgrading it, and just off of like requests. Like, um, I just um, got it working by removing some of the bulk wires, et cetera, to get it working on carpet, which was a big deal. Uh, it works pretty well. There's still some drag, but um, it works well on carpet, and I'm just continuing to improve it um, and different, like just making things stronger and neater and more like user friendly, I guess you could say. And I'm also, um, I'm starting to work on, I'm trying to make an artificial intelligence robot um, based off of a motorized wheelchair. So I'm starting to work on that. Okay, good. So that might be next year's project, huh? Yeah, or this year's project. This the year's. next time is in March. Okay, good, good. So now, now are you in high school? Just Yes, I'm in ninth grade. Okay. And how, how is how is school for you? It's great. And like I said, um, when you're in a lot bigger environment, um, there's a lot more people who have interests like you so um like i've met kids who are like um i think the one kid he's a sophomore and he's in uh ap cal too and uh, i'm not very good in math but he's like just geniuses and it's interesting to just meet people who are so smart and um you basically um you can just have friends that are have your interests so you can actually have good conversations with them. right 
very good. And uh, how is um, your mom has been a, a, a real champion for you, uh, helping yeah, you along, hasn't surely. she? She, she yeah. helped organize, get you to make her fair. She helped organize yeah. your, your booth, and, and she did as much talking to people as you did, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, well, especially with um, – I probably wouldn't have been able to make it to make her fair without her because um, a lot of the deadlines and paperwork, that's still something I'm trying to improve on. Um, but, yeah, I'm not very good with scheduling or paperwork. Right. And just – kind of just been there for me, just like my dad, just, you know, behind you. It, like, even even if, my, like, my dad and my mom, like, like even if they have no idea what you're doing, just having someone behind you, that's what counts. That's great. Hey, what advice would you give to other young makers that uh, have ideas but haven't gotten started doing something? Well, first of all, of course, go to the Maker Fair. But um, above all, just stick with it and just um, there are other people like you. You're not alone. And um, But just, just know that there are, just try – I basically just learned a lot just like um, every time I had a question, that's kind of how my robot went. Like I learned so much through making it. I would I just started, just decided, okay, I'm going to do this. And when I had a question, I searched it online, researched it, and learned it. And then I just kind of progressively moved through. So just I guess the internet is a huge resource and you can learn so much through it. So just kind of u- utilize what you have nowadays. So, But then, yeah, there are other people um, – there are other people like you, and make sure you go to the next fair. Okay. Ben, thanks for talking to me today. It's good to no see problem. you. And uh, you would you keep me in, in, uh, in the loop on, on your various uh, uh, inventions and creations and, and particular how you're doing in the world? We'd like to keep in touch and uh, hope to see you soon. Okay? Of course. I'll see you next year. <laughs> All right, Ben. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye.